Merry Tesla Christmas. It's earnings call day. This is Tesla Tidbits, episode number 431 for August 4th, 2018. No preambles today, folks. Let's just jump right into it because this will be a long show already. First and foremost, let's start with the fact that we had no fireworks on this call, unlike last time. In fact, quite the opposite. Elon was very apologetic, specifically to the two analysts he dressed down during the last earnings call. Overall, he was calm, and frankly, it felt to me like he oozed with confidence throughout the call. I guess you can do that when you're holding a royal flush while your opponents are just bluffing. As I mentioned on the last episode regarding the person following at Model 3 Vins on Twitter, I theorized that this had to be very close to accurate, and Elon confirmed just that almost right out of the gate. Quote, We continue to achieve 5,000 Model 3s per week, or 7,000 combined SX and 3 multiple weeks in July, showing that we're able to do this on a sustained basis. And we expect to, in the absence of a force majeure or some very, very unexpected event, be able to achieve an average of 5,000 Model 3s or above for Q3, and 2,000 Model SXs or above per week for Q3 as well. So essentially, 7,000 cars a week plus, on average, for Q3, end quote. Next up was an amazing bit. I'd already reported on Twitter earlier, thanks to Inside EV's sales scorecard, that the Model 3 for the month of July outsold every EV on the market except for the Prius Prime for the entire year. Let me make this as clear as possible. No EV year-to-date has sold more than the Model 3 did in just the month of July except for the Prius Prime. And that was actually close. But forget the small potatoes of just the EV market. Let's let Elon tell us where Model 3 sits in the market as a whole. Quote, Model 3 market share has surpassed all competitor premium midsize sedans combined. So Model 3 market share is now a majority, or July was a majority, of all premium sedans. That trend is, we think, likely to continue. We do not think it will stop there. End quote. Elon touches on something that owners all too well next. Quote, The more Model 3s that we deliver to the field, it's actually causing a viral growth of our sales. So we deliver a Model 3 to somebody, they love it, they tell all their friends. Really, our customers are our primary sales force. They love their car and take their friends for a drive, and that's the thing that fundamentally drives our sales. End quote. I don't know if truer words have ever been spoken. Tesla's owners are their greatest evangelists and sales force. I know I can speak personally. I love the car so much, I actually helped people at a Tesla store that was closed while I was supercharging with information on the cars. Pretty sure I sold one, too. The actual sales staff just needs to do the paperwork the next time they open. Elon then reiterated the magic words that Wall Street wants to hear and that he's been telling us since the Q1 call. Quote, At a production rate of 7,000 cars a week, I believe that we can be sustainably profitable profitable from Q3 onwards. We're going to try to raise that rate of Model 3 production steadily in the coming quarters and try to get to the 10,000 cars a week number as soon as we can, end quote. He later stated that there is no plan for Tesla to be in the red ever again, quote, From an operating plan standpoint, from Q3 onwards, we really want to emphasize our goal is to be profitable and cash flow positive for every quarter going forward, end quote. He did qualify this, noting that unavoidable exceptions are possible, such as an extreme recession, supply supply chain issues, etc. But the company plan is to never be in the red again. So now came one of the bombshells of the call. The autopilot team was asked to be there as well, which is not normal for this particular type of call. And they were there for very good reason. Tesla is very near having their own AI chip ready to go to power autopilot. But I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. The first thing to know is that with V9 software for the car, Enhanced Autopilot will finally advance beyond the original hardware. On-ramp to off-ramp feature will be coming with this new version of the software. It will automatically change lanes, understand the lane the car is in, and understand the route the driver wants to travel and make that happen, ultimately handing the control back to the driver once you're off the highway. Now to the main event that I referred to earlier. Autopilot version 3 hardware is real and is already in testing. Pete Bannon, whose team is spearheading this development, said, quote, The chips are up and working, and we have drop-in replacements for S, X, and 3, and all have been driven in the field. They support the current networks running today in the car at full frame rates with a lot of idle cycles to spare. So I think we're all really excited about what Andre and his team will be able to do with this hardware in the future. 
One little anecdotal story was I gave a talk to his team on Hardware 3 last month explaining how it, was, how it worked and what it was capable of. Afterwards, one of the researchers came up to me and was really excited and said, this is so exciting. I'm really excited about exploiting this hardware. And he said, I think people are going to want to come and work at Tesla just to have access to this hardware and to try it out because it's so exciting. End quote. High praise indeed. Elon gave us a taste of how much better the new hardware is, and it's stunning. The NVIDIA hardware, known as Autopilot 2.0, is able to handle 200 frames per second of video coming into it. Tesla's Autopilot version 3 is able to handle 2,000. To bring that into better perspective, there are eight cameras on Autopilot 2.0 equipped cars, which means that those cameras can run at a collective average of 25 frames per second. This isn't terrible, it's just over movie frame rates. But certainly having a smoother frame rate would be beneficial to allow the layering on of more features and analysis. Running the same camera number going forward would permit a 250 frame per second rate, assuming the cameras could provide it. That's pretty amazing. You could certainly do a heck of a lot with that kind of granularity of the incoming video. I suspect they'll probably end up feeding 60 or 120 per frame per second video into the system, allowing the extra horsepower to be spent elsewhere. Oh, and this is all fully redundant as well, which is crucial to enable level 5 driving. The last little tidbit is that this hardware is the same cost as the existing hardware, so it's no hit to the bottom line to be putting this hardware into the cars that's an order of magnitude more powerful than the existing stuff. Now, more to the financial side as the analysts began their questions. First up, Model 3 converted from a negative gross margin car to barely a positive one. It was alluded to here and stated in the quarterly shareholder letter that in Q3, Tesla expects Model 3 to achieve a 15% gross margin. Not exactly the 30% that Sandy Monroe said in an earlier story I reported, but it's a great start considering that the company previously lost money on every car produced for most of the first year of its existence. Tesla will have no shortage of higher margin cars to build in Q3, as Elon stated that roughly half of customers are currently selecting dual motor versions of the Model 3. So a really surprising statistic came in in the revelation of what cars are being traded in when purchasing a Model 3. Many have criticized the Model 3 as not achieving the goal of the master plan, since current models don't include the $35,000 version, and it's not truly an everyman's car when the average configuration currently costs north of $50,000. But when you hear this list, that may not necessarily be true. From January to July, the top five non-Tesla cars being traded in are the Toyota Prius, the BMW 3 Series, Honda Accord, Honda Civic, and the Nissan Leaf. So four of the five most traded in non-Teslas are mainstream sedans, not premium ones. Very surprising. The final little bit we've got is the famous, or infamous, depending on your opinion, tent was brought up as well. The question from an analyst was whether or not the tent was a permanent solution. The response was that it was, for now at least, a permanent solution. It was further elaborated, though, that this might be the way to bring future products online, as the line is much more flexible than traditional lines. I have to think at some point that a proper general assembly line for Model 3 will be encased in a building, but somehow I think the tent will be mostly permanent. Maybe that becomes the line to test automations on before deploying them to the rest of the general production lines. Who knows? Alrighty, that's it for this earnings report episode of the show. My apologies for the delay. Real life got in the way of getting the show out. As you know, sometimes that happens with me. Just happened at one of the worst possible times. Anyhow, you can check out the full earnings call at ir.tesla.com. And while you're doing that, please consider supporting the show financially through Patreon at patreon.com slash Tidbits. Thanks very much to our newest patron out there, Stephen McDavid. Thanks also, as always, to our super patrons out there supporting the show at the $10 plus level. They are John Waltower, Drew Schuyler, John Waller, Mark and Sarah Thomas, Ryan Scarborough, Lee Sweet, William Henry Crew III, Dorian Steve Guberman, Bruno Kundici, Joey Boots, Ralph and Cheryl Waterhouse, Adam Raymer Brown, Megawatt Photovoltaic Development, Todd Sullivan, Robert Healy, Mitch Long, Zortec LED Canada, Morvan Nog, Blake Thompson, Raymond and Deborah Malkowitz, T Sportline, and Michael Pastroni. If you can't support with dollars, feel free to leave a positive review for the show instead. If you have feedback for me, as always, the best way to be heard is to tweet at Tesla Tidbits and use the hashtag AskTeslaTidbits if you'd like your question to be considered for the show. I'll see everyone back here again on Monday. Until then, keep it charged and hit the road.